Volcano experts have taken a look at some safety guidelines from Japan's nuclear regulator, and they're raising some questions. Officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority drew up guidelines for dealing with volcanic eruptions. They require plant operators to take certain measures if volcanic activity could affect operations. That includes removing nuclear fuel from the facilities. Several active volcanoes lie within 100 kilometers of the Sendai plant in southwestern Japan, and the regulators have approved a draft safety plan to restart two reactors there. They met with experts to discuss how to come up with standards for predicting eruptions. The experts raised doubts about the safety measures. One said there is usually advanced warning of major eruptions, but he said it takes years to remove nuclear fuel. The regulators say they would consider what the experts had to say. They said they may require the operator of the Sendai plant to undertake additional measures before restarting the reactors. Now remember, NHK just uh, came out with NHK is a um, is a uh, Japanese news outlet that right. many studies are showing this is from simplyinfo.org that uh, they're showing that that cores, multiple cores uh, parts of it or some or, or even most of it have been ejected from from the plane. We thought that too once you've reached containment that was one of my big concerns well, where did the core go and after an explosion like that whether it be steam or, hydro, or, or hydrogen explosion or a combination of both so it got I, I always say the term, it got sneezed out all over the place. I mean, it's totally, you know, it, it's, it's a yeah. huge mess. And, you know, yeah. You know. yeah, you're talking about like the MOX reactor. There's actually three steps to what happened there. The first is they have superheated steam from the uh, the special fuel bundle arrays that actually create tertiated superheated water. Now, the second is it compresses the corium, so you get, a, a, especially when you get unstable plutonium isotopes, because they're making MOX reactor pellets uh, for nuclear weapons, because it was an illegal facility. Uh, and MOX is very, very touchy. So they ended up with an induced uh, criticality from the hydrogen explosions that later created a critical, literally small nuclear explosion. So there were particles and chunks of these fuel rod assembly bundles that were identified as far as 65 to 75 kilometers away. And they're probably a smaller particles that were carried two or 300 kilometers. So there have been estimates by scientists that there's a ring of at least 300 miles where fairly large particle... Uh, uh, plutonium and other highly dangerous isotope pellets actually made it all the way to south and north and in every direction 300 kilometers at least. Which is why the Ronald Reagan, when these things happened, they're getting sprayed with not only nanoparticles but larger particles as well of very highly radioactive material, especially from reactor 3. And all three reactors completely lost containment. They're now kind of saying that, hey, yeah, we, we lost containment completely. And by the way, one of the most dangerous things, it wasn't just the tsunami cutting out the power backup systems, it was the earthquake. So reactor number one lost containment of the reactor core with the earthquake alone. And there was also some damage to some of the uh, the cooling pools of other reactors like an OI that occurred right as the, reactor, as the reactors of these other reactor sites were hit. So it's not just Fukushima that's in danger. If they have major other quakes, which by the way because of the release of plasma inducing effects of geotectonics, there's been a 500 percent increase and level five earthquakes are higher in Japan, and uh, you know, and if astrophysicists want to come combat and challenge me on this, that volcanism and earthquakes are geotectonic events, uh, and there's a change in the level of of particles in space, in the solar system or galaxy, depending on the area that you're transiting through in the solar system or the galaxy, the galactic arm, and that changes the rate of volcanism because you change the plasma effects of the atmosphere, and as you release radioisotopes. You increase the transit of energy, so you increase the risk of having more geotectonic or volcanic events. So we're going to see a lot more bad stuff, in other words, on the Ring of Fire. Well, Dr. Bill, you know, even Weather.com yesterday also was talking about off the coast of Japan is a island that's being formed by volcanism, and what they're worried about there is a collapse of the, of, I guess it's the ash dome, and creating another tsunami that way. Now, this one is 600 miles uh, south of Tokyo. But even still, you know, it, it, the, the way yeah, you travel about and all. It's like a light, giant rock mushroom made of volcanic magma that's hardened in the ocean. And as it falls, it generates a giant tsunami wave. And that, yeah, by the way, that's, that's how most tsunamis have been made over geological history. 
The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it's been able to remove radioactive substances from groundwater. The utility says it can now be safely discharged into the ocean. I don't believe you. I, that is well, not natural. That is a crock. But local fishermen are still skeptical. Tokyo Electric Power Company ran a trial of its system last week. Workers pumped up radioactive groundwater from wells near the reactor buildings and put it through the drainage system. They found most radioactive substances are dropped to an undetectable level. Don't tell me that's natural. That's not natural. You are lying to me right now. Maybe you're lying to yourself. Either tell me the truth or shut up. TEPCO officials explained the results to a local fisheries group. But in the meeting, the group opposed the plan to release the water. They say it could lead consumers to doubt the safety of seafood. Come on. Listen, th listen, this is a threshold moment in your life. You have finally met somebody that is going to require you to tell yourself the truth, tell me the truth, and tell her the truth. The group has asked TEPCO to provide more details on the system. That's a load of crap. You did not just one day, you did not just one day open your mouth and just bleh. Now come on, what the hell is going on? The Japanese government plans to release records of interviews with the late manager of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Masao Yoshida was a central figure in the handling of the 2011 meltdown. The government's investigative panel questioned him about the crisis. NHK has gathered access to the interviews. They show TEPCO executives fail to react appropriately, causing confusion at the site about how to respond. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi reports. Masao Yoshida made efforts to stabilize the nuclear plant after the disaster. He was in charge of a range of tasks including communicating with the head office in Tokyo. And he gave hours of testimony about those experiences to a government investigative panel before he died last July of cancer. The panel members issued a report but did not release the interviews. NHK has obtained those records independently. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant entered the critical phase on March 11, 2011. Officials at the plant noticed late in the afternoon that the emergency cooling system was not working. But the Yoshida wasn't informed until late that night, and the reactors had already started melting down. I'm very regretful about this. We failed to establish a system to receive warnings from the employees on time. The former chief of the plant condemned TEPCO's head office for mishandling the crisis. The following day, Yoshida decided to inject seawater into the crippled number one reactor to cool it down. Typical officials wanted to suspend the plan as they had yet to gain approval from the prime minister. But Yoshida defied that order. I remember vividly TEPCO officials told me over the phone to stop right away, no arguments. But I decided not to follow the order because there were no rational reasons. Yoshida also testified that TEPCO officials didn't know what kind of emergency equipment the field workers needed. TEPCO head office sent things that were not suitable to fix the situation. This was really troublesome since we had to take time to analyze what they were and how they could be used. After radiation around the plant increased, typical head office stopped delivering equipment. Instead, they dropped it off at the facility 50 kilometers away. I had to dispatch workers to get those things. I thought, Please do not disturb us with all this at this very crucial time. While the three nuclear reactors were melting down, Yoshida was at the helm, securing new equipment and making first and important decisions. This former head of the plant was closely acquainted with Yoshida.
talking to Stig. We can learn a lot from this interview. It's very important that officials in charge learn how to improve the organization, measures to respond to emergencies, and management. The government plans to disclose almost all of Yoshida's interviews as early as next month. The records should be closely examined to find out what the country can learn from the experience. Japan's nuclear regulators plan to revise the safety guidelines concerning accidents. They want to study ways of dealing with incidents of radioactive materials spreading from nuclear plants beyond current recommended evacuation zones. The guidelines were changed after the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi meltdown. They rec recommend people within 30 kilometers of a nuclear plant evacuate or stay indoors in the case of an accident. Earlier guidelines had set the radius at 10 kilometers. But experts point out the possibility of residents suffering from internal radiation exposure from plumes that spread beyond 30 kilometers. Nuclear Regulation Authority officials decided to study a wider zone. They'll look into which areas should be issued warnings or follow safety measures. The officials also decide to set similar zones for nuclear fuel recycling facilities on a case-by-case -case basis. Officials overseeing the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in northeastern Japan are putting their hopes in a new water treatment system. Workers for Tokyo Electric Power Company have started testing the system to remove radioactive materials in contaminated groundwater. If successful, the treated water would then be released into the ocean. The test began after about 500 tons of radioactive groundwater was pumped up from drainage wells around the reactor buildings. The workers then ran about 290 tons of water through the system to see how effective it is in removing radioactive materials. TEPCO officials say if successful, the system would reduce the density of radioactive substances in the water substantially. The goal is to prevent tainted groundwater flowing from the plant into the ocean. The officials also hope to reduce the daily flow of groundwater into the reactor buildings, currently about 400 tons by half. They say they'll release treated water into the ocean only if local residents and municipalities agree. TEPCO officials are planning to meet with fishermen to explain the test results. The fishers have expressed concern that discharging even treated water may damage the industry's reputation. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been struggling to stop contaminated water from leaking into the ocean. They have a new plan for a wall in a tunnel underneath the complex to try to stop the radioactive flow. Highly contaminated water is flowing into a maze of underground utility tunnels. Engineers suspect that water is mixing with groundwater and leaking into the ocean. In April, workers with the Tokyo Electric Power Company started to create a wall of ice between the basement of the number two reactor building and the tunnel. They installed pipes to carry coolants, but by July, the water had yet to freeze. So workers added more than 400 tons of ice and dry ice. They say this helped freeze over 90% of the tunnel cross-section. They report obstacles prevented them from installing coolant pipes everywhere. TEPCO officials say they want to fill gaps in the ice with materials such as cement. Nuclear regulators say they'll decide whether to approve the plan. First, they want to assess the effectiveness of using filler material in tests conducted by TEPCO. A separate project is now underway at the plant to freeze soil and create a wall of ice around the four reactor buildings. It is aimed at blocking groundwater from flowing into damaged reactor buildings and becoming tainted. But a delay in efforts to build the wall in the tunnels could hold up that project as well. That's because the ice wall and the tunnels will intersect at some points. Japan's nuclear regulators plan to revive the safety guidelines concerning accidents. They want to study ways of dealing with incidents of radioactive material spreading from nuclear plants beyond current recommended evacuation zones. The guidelines were changed after the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi meltdown. They recommend people with 30 kilometers of a nuclear plant evacuate or stay indoors in the case of an accident.
Earlier guidelines had set the radius at 10 kilometers, but experts point out the possibility of residents suffering from internal radiation exposure from plumes that spread beyond 30 kilometers. Nuclear Regulation Authority officials decided to study a wider zone. They will look into which areas should be issued warnings or follow safety measures. The officials also decided to set similar zones for nuclear fuel recycling facilities on a case-by-case -case basis. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident in March 2011 created massive amounts of highly radioactive waste. Three years later, the Environment Ministry is struggling to deal with it. The Ministry unveiled a plan to build storage facilities in five different free prefectures. But one mayor says the waste is not welcome in his town. The facilities are designed to permanently hold materials with radiation levels above 8,000 becquerels per kilogram. That would include sewage sludge, incinerated ash and debris. Last month, the ministry decided to build a storage site on state-owned land in Shuya, a town in Tochigi Prefecture, north of Tokyo. But the mayor opposes the plan. Mayor Kazuhisa Mikata and the Speaker of the local assembly visited the ministry to file their concerns. They say the facility would have a negative impact on natural water resources and agricultural products. They said local produce would suffer from unfounded fears about food safety. We want to explain the plan. Please give us the opportunity. Mikata told reporters the central government must explain why it chose the Shioya site before it carried out a detailed inspection. We can't accept the proposal of building a permanent radioactive waste storage site in our town. An expert panel set up, a Toshik, set up by Toshiki Prefecture will meet on Wednesday to examine the site selection process the central government used. Now, some people who used to live near Fukushima Daiichi are planning to organize tours of their hometown. They want to keep memories of the nuclear accidents three years ago alive. Authorities designated seven municipalities around the plant as part of a no-entry evacuation zone. People need permission to enter the area, but some from the town of Okuma have got approval to show visitors what's become of the place they used to live. They say participants would wear protective gear and would see the no-entry zone from inside a bus. The visitors would be checked afterwards for exposure to radiation. I want people to come and see the reality. I hope they'll stop and think about what happened and share their thoughts with friends and others around them. Members of the group plan to operate the tour once a month starting in October. Officials overseeing the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in northeastern Japan are putting their hopes in a new water treatment system. Workers for Tokyo Electric Power Company have started testing the system to remove radioactive materials in contaminated groundwater. If successful, the treated water would then be released into the ocean. The test began after about 500 tons of radioactive groundwater was pumped up from drainage wells around the reactor buildings. The workers then ran about 290 tons of water through the system to see how effective it is in removing radioactive materials. TEPCO officials say if successful, the system would reduce the density of radioactive substances in the water substantially. The goal is to prevent tainted groundwater flowing from the plant into the ocean. The officials also hope to reduce the daily flow of groundwater into the reactor buildings, currently about 400 tons by half. They say they'll release treated water into the ocean only if local residents and municipalities agree. TEPCO officials are planning to meet with fishermen to explain the test results. The fishers have expressed concern that discharging even treated water may damage the industry's reputation. Some rice farmers in northeastern Japan had to stop exporting their produce after the nuclear accident in 2011. Now they're shipping once more, and people in Singapore are getting the first taste. Officials with the Japanese Agricultural Association convinced Singaporean authorities that rice from Fukushima Prefecture is safe. Staff at a Japanese-run supermarket put bags of the Koshi Hikari brand on their shelves. They also put up a notice explaining how the rice was checked for radioactivity. Still, some customers said they're concerned. The store manager said they don't need to worry. Our mission in uh, Singapore is uh, we, uh, we'd like to introduce uh, 
safety and delicious food, Japanese food to the, this uh, Singapore market. Officials with the Japanese Agricultural Association are talking with authorities in other countries. They hope to see Fukushima rice on a lot more tables around the world. Now, some people who used to live near Fukushima Daiichi are planning to organize tours of their hometown. They want to keep memories of the nuclear accidents three years ago alive. Authorities designated seven municipalities around the plant as part of a no-entry evacuation zone. People need permission to enter the area, but some from the town of Okuma have got approval to show visitors what's become of the place they used to live. They say participants would wear protective gear and would see the no-entry zone from inside a bus. The visitors would be checked afterwards for exposure to radiation. <laughs> I want people to come and see the reality. I hope they'll stop and think about what happened and share their thoughts with friends and others around them. Members of the group plan to operate the tour once a month starting in October. Japan's uh, government and construction industry have drawn up an action plan to double the number of female workers at construction sites. It's aimed at addressing a labor shortage in the industry ahead of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Infrastructure Minister Akihiro Ota and Industry Association representatives decided on the plan. The government and the industry aim to double the number of female construction workers from the current 100,000 within five years. This plan calls for firms and associations to set up more changing rooms at sites, as well as uh, holding training courses to help women return to work after maternity or childbearing leave. The number of construction workers in Japan has decreased nearly 30 percent since its peak in 1997. Demand for workers is expected to rise because of reconstruction work in areas affected by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, as well as the need to build facilities for the Tokyo Olympics. Sporting goods manufacturers in Japan are looking at the future of their business, and they really don't like what they see. The population here is aging, the birth rate is also low, and the number of people playing sports is on the decline. So the manufacturers are trying to expand the playing field. A professional 303 basketball league was officially opened in July in Japan. The game incorporates music, dance and performance to make it exciting. The league is run by a major sports book retailer. It's hoping that 3 and 3 basketball will be included in the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. The company is aiming to boost its sales of basketball gear by getting more people in their 20s and 30s to enjoy that sport. Traditionally, sports in Japan have been promoted through after-school club activities. But with the population declining and aging, we need to target not only school children, but also other age groups. But another sports equipment manufacturer is convinced more can be done to increase the number of children who play sports. It is providing services to gauge children's basic athletic abilities. The maker compares the results with data is collected from over 20,000 children of the same age, calculated down to the month. <laughs> the company tests the children's basic running, balancing, throwing and other skills and shows them their strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> Excellent. Maybe you'll become an Olympic athlete in the future. <laughs> The company is trying to get children more interested in sports by finding out which ones they are good at. The firm encourages children to continue being athletic. We hope children will show interest and start playing sports. Then the sporting population will grow and we can expand our business. On the other hand, this sports good company is targeting its walking shoes at the growing elderly population. The company thinks the elderly are an untapped market because anyone can enjoy walking, even senior citizens. The company has started offering a physical training program to help seniors stay fit. Through various exercises, 
It teaches them how to keep their joints and muscles flexible. It also promotes a walking workout to keep old people in good shape. It teaches them the right way to walk. I didn't do much walking, but since I've been coming here, I've started walking outdoors as well. The company boosted its sales of walking shoes in 2013 by 147 percent from the previous year. One of the factors was the introduction of its fitness program for seniors. We hope to increase the number of seniors doing sports by helping to extend the years they are active so we can expand our market. Japanese sporting goods firms are testing their limits to overcome the slump in domestic demand. By opening up new markets, they're hoping to turn the game around. Japanese firms are trying to hire more college graduates in Asia to help expand business in the region. Some are prepared to recruit graduates on the spot at a Tokyo job fair this week. Eight Japanese companies with operations in China and Southeast Asia took part in the job fair. Managers are interviewing university students who study Japanese in Thailand, Indonesia, and other places. A major recruitment services firm organized the event. Its officials said more firms are looking for local employees to bridge the gap with their Japan-based colleagues. We have local affiliates in Asia, so we want employees who can contribute to our global operations. I want to work with the same sense of responsibility as Japanese employees. And this event will go on until Tuesday.